Good morning, good morning, good morning. My name is uh, Dr. Calvin Mackey of STEM NOLA, and I'm honored to be here today to bring to you STEM Baton Rouge, The Power of Chemistry, sponsored by Shell. Uh, it was seven years ago when we founded STEM NOLA to expose and inspire and engage communities in hands-on science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. In the last seven years, we've engaged over 65,000 K-12 students, over, uh, over 17,000 families, and over 1,500 college students and STEM professionals. And one thing that I'm happy about is that we have been able to put over a million dollars in the hands of college students uh, serving as college interns. And today, young people and parents, in every breakout room that you go into, we have an amazing uh, college intern from colleges all over the state of Louisiana and all over this country are uh, interacting with your scholar. And all of this is made possible by our sponsors. So we would like to say thank you to Shell for stepping up to the plate and being a good corporate partner uh, citizen and saying Baton Rouge need this. And this is the, this is the second of three sponsorships uh, for STEM Saturdays we're receiving from Shell. And on behalf of STEM NOLA, on behalf of STEM Baton Rouge, on behalf of all the participants, I'd like to say thank you. And we say thank you because this would not be possible without such generosity and without such uh, philanthropy. So today we're doing the power of chemistry and I'm always excited about when, 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 when we could do things that's relevant to us. At STEM NOLA we believe that STEM should be culturally and environmentally relevant. And what we're trying to do, we've built a model in New Orleans that we know is scalable, transferable, and reproducible. And we're working now to scale that model in Baton Rouge. And we're going to find somebody in Baton Rouge to run this. And Baton Rouge will own it. And you will have your own ecosystem in Baton Rouge delivering culturally, culturally and environmentally relevant STEM to you on an ongoing basis. Now, before I get started, I'm a proud father and I have to say something. Parents, we started this seven years ago because nine years ago my son was in a garage. My son came home and said his teacher was just talking to the boy and he didn't like science anymore. And I said, look, boy, we're going to check your DNA because that, that's not possible. He said, no, Daddy, I like to do hands-on. The teacher just talked to the boy. So we started going in the garage doing all these hands-on activities. He came home another time a couple of months later. I said, what's your grades? He said, I got all A's. I said, that's what I expect of you. He said, Daddy, my friends want to know how I know all this. I said, do you, did you tell him you do this in a garage with your dad? And he said, yeah, daddy, but my friends need this. Right then and there, my son realized he was exposed to things and people that his friends were not. And he believed that his, if his friends were exposed to those things and those people, they would have the grasp and the aptitude of STEM just like him. And that's why we have been doing what we've been doing. And for the last seven years, we've done this. For the last seven years, my son has participated. For the last seven years, everything that we've given our two sons, we've given over 65,000 kids. Now, I stand here to say proudly as a father that yesterday my son accepted a full tuition, full roaming board, all fees scholarship from Howard University through his PhD, meaning that starting June 12th when he showed up at Howard, he'll, now, he'll never have to pay another penny for education until you get his PhD. And you say, yeah, that's your son. No, that's one of our children. And that's what's possible for every last one of our children. If, if we commit to them and give them the pathway to commit to their passion in science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, this is, that is the why. This is why we do what we do. And parents, in the 21st century, your son would have only, I mean, your, your scholar would have only one or three options. Either they're going to take something break something and or make something. And if we don't give them the skills and education and inspiration, like with STEM Baton Rouge, to make something, like make a living, make a life, make a difference, that's only gonna leave them with the two options that we see on the news every night, and we don't want that for any of our children. So we are happy and, and elated that you all tuned in today. But we need you all to keep tuning in. And we need you all to tell your friends. And we need you all to tell your communities. If you like it, take it to school and tell the schools you should be doing this. Because the more kids we expose to STEM, the greater the possibilities for them in the 21st century. And I believe that and I know that because I'm proof and we got enough kids that have gone through STEM NOLA now that has science, technology, engineering, mathematics degrees. That's true. And why is that important? Because in the 21st century, we're either training our students from the neck up 
or we're training our students from the neck down. And if we're training our students from the neck down, their competition in the 21st century will be automation, automatic machine, machine learning, uh, artificial intelligence. What I have before me is a humanoid. This is an automatic machine. A humanoid is a robot that tries to behave like a human. This robot named Alpha can do uh, many activities just like a human. Alpha can do push-ups. Get it, Alpha? Alpha can even show off just like you. And after I ride my Peloton like Alpha, I take my time getting up. Alpha, for y'all who's going into the entertainment industry and think you're going to be a southern dancing doll or whatever, guess what? You got competition because Alpha can dance. Uh-oh. Yep. Alpha can twerk. Should have had her at the Bayou Classic. Now Alpha really showing off. This is a human machine. And we can program this machine in things like Scratch, Python, C++. That's why it's very important for you all to learn coding and understand technology so that you can control it, so that technology does not control you. After Alpha does all that, Alpha gets up and takes a bow. Give a hand up for Alpha. And just like Beyonce, Alpha comes with her own band. This is the competition in the 21st century. This automatic machine, this humanoid is built by a company called Ubitech, the largest commercial robotic builder in America. Two years ago at the Consumer Electronics Show in Las Vegas, they, they, uh, they brought out a, a robot called Walker. And Walker is about five feet six and walked across the flo floor and served us. And they estimate within 10 years, all of us have a humanoid personal assistant. I can't have a humanoid personal assistant in our home. Parents, this is the future. It may not look like a humanoid, but as Amazon have entire warehouses that are totally automated with robots. I have seen them. Either we're training our kids from the neck up or we're training them from the neck down. If we're training them from the neck down, this is the competition and they cannot win. If we're training them from the neck up and they develop their brain and their heart, then they will be able to control the machines and the machines will not control them. Now that's our why we're about to get started. Next up, I'm gonna bring up my friend and supporter of STEM Baton Rouge, Mayor President Sharon Weston Broom, uh, Mayor President of the City of Baton Rouge. Hello, Dr. Mackey, Mayor Broom here. Thank you for helping STEM Baton Rouge grow into the thriving program it is today. I want to welcome every one of the students participating in today's virtual STEM Baton Rouge experience. It's amazing to think that almost two years ago, STEM Baton Rouge kicked off the first ever STEM Fest hosted in our community. It was a pleasure to see more than 1,000 people at Baton Rouge Community College for a day filled with fun and engaging STEM activities. And despite the challenges of the pandemic, I'm so glad to see STEM Baton Rouge is still here, growing and proving they are here to stay. We are collectively helping to expose and inspire hundreds of young minds in our community to STEM education and showing them the opportunities and possibilities available to them in the 21st century. I hope something you learned today will encourage you to become part of the next generation of creators, innovators, and entrepreneurs. Baton Rouge and this nation needs you. Thank you and have a great day. Ben. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mayor President. Uh, and thank you for your support. And thank you for all that you're doing for all the communities of the city of Baton Rouge. Next up, I have my friend and supporter, uh, Darylene Harris from Shell. Uh, welcome. 
Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Harris. Thank you for your support and thank you for your commitment. And young people, I just want you all to know, you don't go, you don't go anywhere in this world by yourself. Uh, if you want to know how you get to where you are today, look at the five people you hung out with five years ago. If you want to know where you're going to be in five years, look at the five people you hang, you hang, you're hanging with right now. And I'm happy to say that I'm hanging with uh, Darlene Harris and Shell in the city of Baton Rouge. And we're coming together to give you what you need so that you can be uh, transformative in the next five years. So, parents, what we built is a high-functioning STEM community, and we believe a high-functioning STEM community is child-centered, adult-governed, elder rule. So, er so everything we do is, th is done through the lens of what's in the best interest of our scholars, the K-12 students. Next thing we do is that we surround those K-12 scholars with college interns. And we pay those college interns. And in the breakout rooms today, you'll see college interns from LSU, Southern, Gramlin, LSU, I mean Xavier, uh, Dillard, all over the state, uh, in the University of New Orleans. And then we surround those college students with STEM professionals like Darlene Harris. But today, we're going to have some activities, uh, chemistry activities, brought to you by uh, Henry Monroy. Henry Monroy graduated from the University of New Orleans with a BS in chemistry. And now he's working on his master's in, uh, in art of teaching. Uh, he wants to be a teacher now. Isn't that a beautiful thing? But he's going to demonstrate some, chemi some chemical reactions uh, for you. Henry Monroy. Thank you, Dr. Maki. I appreciate it. Uh, yes, I am Mr. Henry. I graduated from New Orleans, University of New Orleans, with a bachelor's in chemistry. Uh, why is because it was the only thing I understood growing up learning English. Science was always easy for me. And however, I, I, I enjoy how my chemistry teacher taught me in high school. And, and then I went into my college and just became a chemist. But then I interned in STEM NOLA and I just love how uh, I was able to interact with the students. I enjoy more and more and more every day. But it's not enough about me. Let's learn a little bit of our science today. Right here, we have a bowl. And what we're going to do is we're going to sublime uh, carbon dioxide. Sublimation meaning it's going to go from a solid to a, a gas phase immediately. It's going to skip one phase. That is because uh, sublimation. Here, give me a sec. I'm grabbing my uh, dry ice. You need to be careful with dry eyes because it's really, really, really cold. So 
just don't touch it with bare hands. I'm gonna use tongs right here. And, but before that, we're gonna break a little bit. And if I can have somebody to bring me the hot water that's on my left, that will be cool. There we go. Excuse me, I can't see anything. Hi. I can't see Is that better? Uh, my, my, my screen is pitch black. So, as you can hear, the metal is getting really, really cold. And then I'm going to add the warm water. Okay. And then it's going to skip the sublimation. It's going to go into the sublimation state. So, I don't know if you can hear it bobbling. But I'm going to add a little bit more of ice dry eyes again i'm using tongs so don't touch your eyes with your hand it's really really cold it can give you some burns gonna add a little bit more Ooh, yes 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 also and this is what they're using halloween by the way like those machines really fuck machines they use dry eyes um I'm gonna uh, grab the cheesecloth right here. Hey, <laughs> I'm right there. I'm gonna grab the cheesecloth and I'm gonna use, I'm gonna wet it in soapy water. Okay. Okay. And we're gonna use the soapy water to make like a thin film around the rim. Right here. We're gonna make a film. Sorry, sorry, give me a sec. To cover the ice to make a. Okay, patience, 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 patience. There we go. Did we did it? Oh, on the first try. So now the dry ice is trapped in there and then as that is going up, we're going to put it to the side so we can start our other experiment. Okay. Let's see how long it takes. So the other experiment is going to be our uh, elephant toothpaste. A really popular experiment. I really love it. Okay. So in the experiment, we have some chemicals, hydrogen peroxide, 60%. Our uh, potassium iodide, our catalyst. Okay. Our catalysts are really important. I can tell you why. So I'm full coloring to make it uh, look pretty. Uh, a thermometer because this is the exothermic reaction is gonna get really warm. Okay. So let's get started. So right now I'm gonna measure 70, uh, 70 mils. Oh, it popped. Uh, we can do another one. I'm gonna use 70 mils of hydrogen peroxide. Okay, eyeball it. 30 mils, add it to the early mine flask. There we go. Uh, soap. We need soap because we need to. Okay, I'll tell you why. Food coloring. <laughs> okay. Let's do another color. Let's do red, why not? There we go. So what's gonna happen is, when I add the iodine, the potassium iodine right here, right? when I add this um, chemical, this is a catalyst. It's gonna react with the hydrogen peroxide, breaking those, those molecules, and those gas that's gonna be released is gonna be trapped by the soap, and so it's gonna make bubbles or foam instead. Okay. So let's see, let's do it. Okay. I'm an experienced chemist, so I don't, I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. Um, here, let me use something here. Okay, everybody ready? I'm gonna drop the potassium iodine in three, two, one. Oh, ah, gotcha. So right now I'm gonna measure the temperature just to show you. It's gonna be room temperature around 23 Celsius. 
uh, 21.9, right? 21.9 Celsius. We don't use Fahrenheit in chemistry. Okay, ready? One, two, three, go. Let me get away from it. Okay. Oh yeah. Okay, as you can see, there's gas being released. Okay, I love it. Right now it's going up, 77, 79, 81. Okay, there we go. Okay, 78. Oh, careful now. Okay, it's really hot. Yeah, it went to all the way to 78 Celsius. Okay, that's a lot of uh, energy being released. So, what I mean by that? Okay, just let it zoom in my face. Well, not too much. Uh, so, what's happening is the, uh, this is an exothermal reaction. And, and, and that is caused by the catalyst interacting with the hydrogen peroxide, making that reaction really go fast. And we love that in chemistry because it, we spend less energy uh, creating something. So, that means saving money, saving time. And actually, it's, it's some part of green chemistry, which is, gonna, is great for the environment. Um, that way we can have uh, safer, safer fuels, like um, uh, Presenter did. And I just, I love chemistry. I hope you enjoyed today. I'll see you soon. Um, and, um, oh, yes, exothermal reactions. Okay, they are really cool reactions. They produce heat, all right? They produce heat, they get warm. And that's why the reaction increases. And it gets hot, okay? And right now, I'm gonna leave this mess here. Where I'm gonna cap the chemicals, obviously. Okay, be safe. Okay, I'm gonna cap the chemicals and see you soon into the Zoom session in the breakout rooms. Um, just keep learning. All right, have a good one. See you soon. Give it up for Henry. Give it up for Henry. Now made a mess, all this stuff smell. I need to keep my mask on or something. Anyway, you did well. You did well, Henry. You did well. Uh, I, I like this. Really? I can't say I like it. I like it, but I don't like it. Uh, I don't like chemistry. I don't like biology. I don't like electrical engineering. And that's why I have three degrees in mechanical engineering. Now, I say that to say, parents, that... We, we need to expose our kids to a lot of things so they can find themselves. Just because they, they have an experience and say, well, I don't like that. That doesn't mean that, you know, STEM isn't for them. Uh, Ms. Harris says she loved chemistry and she's a chemical engineer. I actually have an alternative energy company and my partner is a chemical engineer. And we laugh because he does all the things I hate and I do all the things he hate. He come up with the chemical equations and the processes. And with my mechanical engineering degree, I come up with all the pumps and the pipes to move the, the, the chemicals around. So you see how that worked, like a hand in a glove? So that's why it's very important for you to keep coming back and keep having these experiences. But I know you're tired of hearing us talking. It's time now to go innovate, create, and make. So what's gonna happen next? Uh, you're gonna move to your rooms, and I just wanna say, you're gonna do three exercises. You're gonna do three activities a day. You, you're gonna do uh, like a, I believe, cranberry science, slime, Lava lamps, rainbow skittles. Oh, that's all a K second group. So K two second, you're gonna do you're gonna do a lot of fun stuff like edible. You're gonna have skittles, chromatography, butterfly. What what are my third through twelfth graders gonna do? Third through twelfth graders, y'all gonna do some stuff too. I just don't have it here. Oh, I, I got it. Elephant toothpaste slime, and you each one of you all gonna make your electrochemical battery right. Now, when we do this in person, we usually have two batteries, one for the K second group, and your battery is usually powered by a lemon or a potato, and you, you see how the acid in the lemon and potato uh, make the electrons flow with the copper and the nickel uh, leads, leads, but everybody going to make their own electrical chemical battery, and you're going to have copper, and you're going to have these nickel leads. And you're gonna have salt water in it. We used to use vinegar and you used to have a lot of corrosion issues. The engineering design process said you have to keep trying things over. Now we have a salt water battery that lasts even longer. So you even have directions in your kit to on how to proper care for your battery because you're gonna have to change out the water. 
but the battery actually works, and you see how salt water, copper, and nickel causes electrons to flow and complete the circuit and generate power. So I don't know about you, but I'm ready. So what we're we gonna do next, I'm gonna turn you over to Miss Keelan. And Miss Keelan is going to ask you to turn on your camera because we need we need we have to take group photos, just like in school, we need group photos for the for the for the sponsors. Also at the beginning we had a pre-survey. At the end, we're gonna have a post survey. Uh, parents, students, did we bring this to you for free? I mean, uh, boxes just showed up like Christmas. There's a cost to this. And we have to provide data to our sponsors so they can know that we are doing what we say we're going to do. And the responses from you let them know that you want this so they can continue to sponsor it so all of us can uh, be here together doing what we're doing. So we're doing our part. The little part we ask from you is to make sure you do the survey for us. Really do the survey for you. All right, if you want this to continue. And if you don't like it, do it so somebody else can get it. So I'm Dr. Calvin Mackey, and uh, thank you all. You're going to go to Miss Keelan. You're going to take a picture. Then she's going to put you out in break, breakout rooms. When you go in the breakout room, make sure you introduce yourself. Uh, let this college student know what you want to be. Ask them questions. Ask them where they're from. And let's get to know each other. And let's build and let's learn about the power of chemistry. Y'all have a great day.